Thank you for inviting me in this big seminar, GI in GIFT, and I'm so appreciated because, as you heard about me, I'm very young and fresh doctor. Because only last year I got a PhD, so I can tell you that I don't have any splendid uh, research work. But uh, as I'm your like a senior, so I will tell you the how can you research um, if you have some your own topic. So. My topic uh, is microstructural design of high strength bainitic steels. An important thing is the high strength and bainitic steels. It means the mechanical property and it means the microstructures. So I used the word design. So in, in the scientists do not use usually. I don't think so. Design is not uh, familiar to us, but uh, I use the design because so I first thought about the what is the mean, meaning of design? What do you think about the design? Do you have any idea? First time, so I simply uh, thought about the one artist. He is drawing a picture. So I thought about him, what kind of things, what he needs. So I first thought uh, things he had to use. First thing is like, uh, paint, brush, and sketchbooks, it is his ingredient to draw a picture. But I don't think so. It is not a whole thing to draw a picture. The main purpose, main thing is his own idea to draw a picture. Like a scientist, it is same as us, same to us. Uh, we have so many uh, <coughs> chemical components and uh, rolling and cooling conditions. But if we don't have our own idea. We cannot make uh, new and advanced materials. It is very important to us to material scientists. So I'd like to tell you the some very basic things. This is everybody knows this periodic table. I I think that if you are a middle school student, you uh, remember memorized this row, uh, this column and rows. And uh, if you are a smart student. Uh, maybe you might uh, remember many things, but any can know the what kind of uh, elements in here. But material scientists, we have to use only uh, things if we have own purpose. In my case, my uh, <coughs> topic is steel, so main uh, element is Fe, and if you want to, it makes the austenite, and you can use nickel and carbon and manganese and so on. And there are many cases you can choose anything in these period tables. So uh, like in mathematically, we can make many, many, we cannot uncountable materials when we use this period table. But it is not a scien scientist thing. The scientists have to choose on their purpose. So they have to choose only um, one or two things and in steels, but in that case about 10 or 20 elements are used, but we have to know the, each purpose of elements. And the other important thing is you can uh, thought the rolling and cooling conditions. But in the cast iron that has no rolling condition, but it, in this case I will explain to you uh, like a steel plate. In this case, the steel has very uh, exciting things, but it is very difficult to us because it has transformation, phase transformation. In high temperature, the austenite and FCC is stab stable, and the low temperature and PCC is stable. So it cools down, the uh, phase will be changed, and uh, it, is, it makes the vari various microstructures. And there is a rolling condition too, and if there is rolling conditions, the grains are elongated and uh, the dislocations are located in here and that makes uh, a strength of steels. So I told, I tell you the two kinds of things. First thing is uh, elements and second thing is rolling and cooling conditions. So I think the chemical composition and rolling and cooling conditions and makes advanced steels. So I think whole kind of this work is a design 
in our material scientist. So I will tell you the, how I designed my own microstructures and my steels and, and my materials. Uh, this is the history of the steels. Uh, that was uh, some questions in the early 20th century. Uh, as you know, the austenite. Here's a, here's a name of followed William Chandler Roberts Austin. So at that time, many uh, researchers already know that austenite is exist. Uh, there was some contrast between alpha and beta and gamma, and as you know, the beta phase is removed nowadays. Uh, so they, they already knew that two kind of things. If there is a slow cooling rate, it is uh, changes to polite, and it, there, if there is a fast cooling rate, it changes to martensite. They already knew that these two kind of microstructures. But they didn't know that the between polite and martensite, it, it means the slow, between slow cooling rate and fast cooling rate. So they didn't know that the, what kind of microstructures microstructures will be exist in that case. So many researchers studied very, very hardly. So in 1930, Davenport and Bain, they found some new type of microstructures, but they didn't know that, so they uh, explained that microstructure as dark etching aggregate. So uh, they named the martensite truth type. It's just like uh, they first time thought about that uh, like a tempered martensite. But in 1934, research staff named Bainite because it is followed his name Bain, uh, because uh, honor of colleague E.C. Bain. So if you are a very uh, kind guy in your laboratory and you are very smart and your coworkers will, be, will have an honor of you and they will make your own name microstructures. In my case, if there are many friends in here, if I <laughs> discover some uh, microstructures like uh, Hyogyeong Knight, like that. But the name Bay Knight didn't use immediately even by Bain and his co-workers because they didn't know that the, the, um, how the microstructure can be made and the uh, mechanical properties of that and uh, some kinetics. So many uh, researchers uh, uh, studied. This is the Bain's group. Uh, they didn't use the Bainite, so they uh, explained that unnamed and dark etching acicular aggregates are much similar to martensite. But in this group, the Hoyt appealed to name the structure Bainite. So Davenport and Greninger and Troiano and uh, they researched more and Smith and Mel, Aronson and Wells, Irvine and Pickering, and as you know, the very uh, of his authority in Bainite ferrite and Bainite, uh, Padesia, uh, made uh, this uh, very nice book like a uh, Bible in Bainite ferrite. So Bainite instills. So I studied in this book a uh, history of uh, of Bainite ferrite. Uh, I will tell you the kin uh, mechanism of how can Bainite can form the Bain model. It was the simple model of the Bainite ferrite. The, this one is FCC, and it is uh, changes to the cooled down to the uh, low temperature. It will be it wants to be changed to PCC, but if there has no uh, not enough time to diffusion in the inside of carbon atoms, but then it cannot change it to PCC easily. So it can change the PCT. So we call it the body sensor central tetragonal. And as you know, because you are a graduate stu school students, uh, you heard about that uh, when you're undergraduate. But that thing is, uh, it is make by, made by the less type because that they have no chance to diffuse like uh, EQX the microstructures, so they grow up like as a less type. And in, it's like uh, the <coughs> main thing is martensite Martensite is a thermal uh, transformation and they have shear transformation. Uh, many uh, researchers think about that, uh, assumed that there is uh, no diffusion in this martensite if, if there is 100%. Uh, but in, in this simple model has uh, one problem because uh, invariant plane, we call it the heavy plane. Heavy plane was not uh, fixed, it, it will be changed. 
So they make the combined model and uh, the BCC inside of FCC is some tilt and this is easy way to make Bayon pattern. So it is the now combined model. And growth mechanism of bainite. Uh, important thing is the nucleation site. The nucleation, the prior nucleation site is austenite grain boundary because, as you know, the grain boundary, the energy is very uh, not unstable. Uh, energy is unstable, so it can be a nucleation site of each uh, microstructures. So first time, the subunit can grow like this less type because they don't have enough time to diffuse the to grow the normal directions. So they grow like this and there are um, it can be a nu another nucleation site of subunit and it grows and it can make a shift. And at that time the uh, diffusion is not enough to uh, in, in that temperature so there is uh, some carbide and retained austenite in here so it can make the bainite steel strength. So I told you the bainite ferrite because it of its strength. In nowadays, the high strength is very uh, important because uh, reserves in the natural gas or crude oils are very far from the market. So they need some high pressure. So pipelines have to endure the, uh, that high pressure. So they need high strength. And second important thing is high toughness at a lo low temperature. Many reserves are located in the Siberia and uh, Alaska, like the very cold place. So they need uh, some low temperature. We call it easily ductile brittle transition temperature. And uh, we have to check that two kind of things. So in my case, my purpose, I'd like to get the two goals. First thing is high strength. And second thing is high toughness at a low temperature. So uh, it, I'd like to get the two goals in my, in my uh, topics. So first thing is the high strength steel. So hard bainite is uh, uh, discovered by, uh, developed by <coughs> Badesha and in that TM image, there are many, very uh, nanoscale, uh, thin type of lenses are exist and they are the alpha and gamma <coughs> is exist. In that case, they, he used the, the uh, isothermal holding and 200 degrees Celsius because it is under the martensite start temperature. So the strength of the, these steels was very high, 2.5 gigapascal, and hardness, because hardness is, was very high too. But the only one uh, problem was fracture toughness. It is low thing. So, uh, in, that case, in this study, they didn't uh, care about the uh, uh, in toughness, so uh, they they'd like to make some very very strong steel. So I don't think so. It is problem. So I researched more things about the toughness. So I studied that why the this uh, steels toughness is a little below. So bainite is composed of fine less, but the effective grain size is large. You can see this image. The, this is the EBS image, and the less is very mm, thin, but the effective grain size, you can imagine that this is very large. It cannot uh, make the bending of crack, so uh, it is easily to fracture. So if bainite has low angle grain boundary, it is not effective to block crack cross. In this case, I will tell you the later, the ashkila ferrite and bainite ferrite. Uh, in this case, uh, you can watch that uh, this uh, line is a high angle grain boundaries and this some dot lines are low angle grain boundaries. If it is uh, made by the high angle grain boundaries, the crack will be bent easily. So it is uh, very strong to the toughness, but in bainite ferrite case, the crack goes very directly because they cannot uh, stop the growth of crack because it means the, in the uh, fracture, the in high temperature, usually ductile fracture is domain, and uh, low temperature, the brittle fracture is main. So in the brittle fracture, uh, in PCC, PCC case, the 101 plane is the main direction of the cleavage fracture. So it is very important about the 
uh, high angle grain boundary or low angle grain boundary. It, is, it has more than 15 degree. The, the crack can be bent easily because the, it goes follow the 1-0 direction. But in this case, it cannot bend easily because uh, the angle is not as much as uh, in this case. So I will show you some funny things about uh, things about the ductile to brittle transition behavior in FCC and HCP materials. Uh, test temperature is very high, and this case is low. In this case, it is not uh, goes down very uh, deeply. But uh, in this case, the BCC materials, uh, the, it is very different between the high temperature and low temperature because it has ductile to brittle transition temperature. And you can watch that Yaffe diagram in here, and that is, that is very easy way to understand. In this case, the yield strength goes very higher when it is uh, low temperature, as you know, and S1 is a brittle fracture stress for the transgranular mode. So it is uh, Bit in here, this point, that is an easy way to understand ductile to brittle transition temperature. But why we, we, we can have the, some question about the, this kind of things. So many researchers uh, explain about that pure stress. The pure stress, a pure stress is the shear stress required to move uh, dislocation through a crystal lattice. So this is third range stress field. So in this case, uh, very the in, in the case, it is very uh, affected by uh, temperature and uh, about the uh, heat. In this case, the FCC, the dislocation width is, is very wide. So pure stress is very small. So the, in that case, yield strength temperature sensitivity is negligible. But the BCC case, dislocation width is, is very narrow. So pure stress is moderate and the yield strength stress temperature sensitivity is strong. So usually researchers explain that the, why the FCC does not have a uh, ductile to breathe to change temperature in that case. But it is easy way to understand. And there are uh, many researcher research will be uh, needed in the future. So my research objective is I already told you the high strength and high toughness in their cases. Uh, high strength, I will make the microstructure to uh, make the design of the bainitic ferrite. And high toughness, I will make the ashicular ferrite. And I will tell you the reason after. And I will analyze the correlation between microstructures and mechanical properties. I will make my major microstructures uh, fine bainite ferrite because it needs high strength and minor uh, microstructure would be a fine ashicular ferrite because it has high angle grain boundary and uh, it needs high toughness. And high toughness means not a ductile, ductile fracture toughness. It means, I mean, the, in, when it goes the low temperature and there is a, a cleavage fracture and it needs the low temperature, high, high toughness. In this case, uh, the bainitic ferrite are located and, uh, and the, some boundaries of their ashicular ferrite is located. This is my SEM picture uh, as I made. So this is very important pic uh, point in the steels, definition of microstructures. And this uh, arrow is important. Uh, in the upper point, the, it, it is formed at the uh, high temperature and the lower point, it is formed at the low temperature. And as I told you, the, at high temperature, diffusion is the main, and diffusion kinetics or, or diffusion transformation is main, and low temperature, shear transformation is main. So polygonal ferrite, it forms at highest temperature and slowest cooling rate, and nucleates, it takes some uh, time to uh, diffuse, and it Shape, the shape of polygonal ferrite is equiaxed, so it is polygonal. And ashicular ferrite is generally characterized by fine grain size and high angle grain boundaries. Um, a long time ago, the ashicular ferrite is only uh, 
defined in the field of the has, as you know, the heat affected zone when we study that because at there is inclusions and the acicular ferrite nucleate at the inclusions, so it's just like acicular type. But nowadays, uh, uh, in the high strength steels, we have to define the, some uh, microstructures between polygonal ferrite and bainite ferrite. So, uh, acicular ferrite is defined in here, and many researchers are using that. And acicular ferrite nucleation site is uh, both of things, and the uh, prior austenite grain boundary and inclusions. In, but import, uh, main the nucleation site is uh, prior austenite grain boundary, and inclusion is a second. But in that case, acicular ferrite, uh, in, even though it has inclusions, it can nucleate in, inside of the grain. So the shape of acicular ferrite is very uh, uh, complex, and that have some uh, irregular types. And between that grain boundaries, there are many second phases. So granular bainite and bainite ferrite is the same bainite ferrite. And it, it is uh, just like a granular bainite ferrite and bainite ferrite. Uh, this one is uh, uh, some low temperature than the acicular ferrite, so it has uh, bainite ferrite transformation. I, as I told you, the uh, nucleation site of bainite ferrite, uh, it is the prior austenite grain boundary. So uh, when we watch the granular bainite or bainite ferrite, we can watch the prior austenite grain boundary. You can watch yellow triangles and it, because it is conserved. But granular bainite type has much time than the bainite ferrite, so it can diffuse. So they don't have a less type of in these microstructures. Uh, so they they made made like a low angle grain boundaries because uh, some uh, sheaves are made in here, and um, there are some island type of second phases in here and bainite ferrite. Uh, it has uh, no time to diffuse. So uh, the less is, uh, we can find easily less type and we can find the prior site grain boundary. It is very nice, fair, right? And Martin site, it is a little bit different because uh, most the other things are microstructures, but Martin site is, uh, uh, we can understand easily phase. So uh, these types are etched by NITA, but Martin site is very difficult to distinguish when we use nitar etching. So I use the repair etching because it is a, a type of color etching. So uh, we can distinguish Martin site easily because the color will be, be changed to white color. So I can define these only five microstructures in here. Well, I told you five microstructures in here, but it is very difficult to high strength steels because uh, in APIX AD steels, acicular ferrite and granular bainite is uh, a little bit easy to distinguish, and very, very easy case is dual phase steel. Polygonal ferrite and martensite is easy to distinguish. But how can you di uh, distinguish the microstructures in high strength bainite steels? It is very uh, difficult thing in, in this case. So many researchers studied about how can we define the microstructures in here. So Dr. Kang, uh, he suggested interwoven acicular bainite, and uh, Dr. Gu suggested uh, degenerated upper bainite and less bainite and less martensite. But it is not easy to distinguish because they have to use a TEM image and uh, only the SEM or OM scale, they cannot distinguish these microstructures easily. So Dr. Uh, Hak Lee, uh, suggested uh, some solutions, and uh, in this case, slow cooling rate acicular ferrite is uh, shape irregular type like this. As I told you before, I show you five microstructures, basically. But in the case, the fast cooling rate acicular ferrite shape of acicular ferrite is uh, not similar to the slow cooling rate because they that have reason. Uh, initial case. Initial stage, uh, acicular ferrite grains uh, uh, nucleate as a large aspect ratio, but if there was a, there is a slow cooling rate, the I always told you that there is a 
enough time to diffuse by to the room normal direction, so the shape is changed like this. But in this case, fast cooling rate, the, it has no time to uh, make the this equixed or some uh, this thick grains, so they can make uh, they can reserve the large aspect ratio. So uh, you can watch the this type of SQL ferrite. But it is very uh, conversable things because only only the SCM image we cannot distinguish easily. So I can show you the other methods to distinguish. So, so Professor uh, Doctor Lee suggested the some EBS image. This is a inverse pole figure, and this is image quality map. And HQL ferrite is looks like a very very uh, complex microstructures, and inside of the high angle grain boundary, there, there are many uh, low angle grain boundaries and the size of the high angle grain boundary is very small and irregular. And his, he found that the gross direction of vascular ferrite it is 110. And other thing is granular bainite. You, can, uh, remem you have to remember this uh, image. And it is changed. The granular bainite has a very large uh, effective grain size and there are some low angle grain boundaries. The important thing is the high angle grain boundaries and grain sizes are very larger than the acicular ferrite. And the gross direction of granular bainite and bainite ferrite is 111 direction. So you can remember easily bainite ferrite has less, so the, the 111 shape is, looks like a less, so can, you can remember easily. In that case, the acicular ferrite is 110. So uh, it is my uh, research. Uh, I used uh, another method to corner average misorientation. Uh, this is uh, uh, these points are highly local misorient misoriented uh, region. So uh, I found that uh, in this case, bainite ferrite, and they are very highly local, high locally misoriented. So I will uh, magnify this figure. So in this case, uh, uh, bainite ferrite has some lesses inside of the grain, and in uh, inverse pole figure map we cannot see that. And the KAM map, the bainite ferrite and the other microstructures can be distinguished easily. So you can use many methods to define microstructures using SCM, OM, and EBSD and TM. So I make the some prototype microstructures, acicular ferrite and granular bainite and bainite ferrite. Many researchers before me, they researched about uh, that kind of things uh, to using the isothermal holding. But I used the TMCP method because uh, it needs the cooling and the thermal mechanical control process because I, I'd like to control the, uh, when it is goes uh, not a holded. Uh, when goes uh, cool down, and I'd, I'd like to uh, manage the uh, microstructures. So I took many experiments to make uh, uh, main microstructure will be uh, acicular ferrite and granular bainite and bainite ferrite. Uh, next page, there is a solution, and there are some uh, rolling conditions are similar, but the important thing is uh, cooling conditions are different. Uh, in that case, we can uh, calculate the bainite start temperature, but it is experimental thing, so uh, uh, if you want more detailed thing, you have to research more, but you can uh, uh, search easily. In that case, the bainite start temperature and martensite start temperature, and uh, in that case, uh, bainite start temperature is in here, so uh, it cooled down very fast cooling rate, and granular bainite, and it started because it is uh, such as the same microstructure, uh, my, uh, such as uh, same kinetics, bainite ferrite, but in this uh, uh, low cooling rate. And on acicular ferrite, then is two step method because uh, they, acicular ferrite needs, uh, I already explained you the inclusions and the uh, austenite grain boundaries. So in, if the in, nucleate at the inclusion, uh, they need some super cooling. So then is it, it is not stabilized, so 
only not only the austenite grain boundary, but also in the inclusions they can be nucleated. So they need some uh, super cooling and it needs some air air cooling because uh, if do that uh, continuously, it can change it to bainitic ferrite. But in that case, it, they don't have to, to make a bainitic ferrite in that region, so it can make uh, acicular ferrite. So I will tell you the, the toughness for how to design uh, this. It, this is well known that the uh, uh, important thing is the, this is upper shelf energy of sharp graph and uh, main microstructure design, if it, that will be changed, it goes higher, uh, like uh, bainitic ferrite and acicular ferrite and polygonal ferrite. In that case, the Polygonal ferrite or acicular ferrite is higher than bainitic ferrite because it means the main design of microstructures and the domain design. Domain means I already told you the effective grain size of large angle grain boundaries like uh, acicular ferrite and granular bainite. So uh, we have to make some small grains and we have to make some uh, microstructures to go higher. But I didn't care about this upper shelf energy because I have to make the whole of microstructures bainite ferrite because of their uh, strengths. So it is uh, almost fixed. So I, I'd like to change this domain design to get the low temperature toughness. Uh, it is my way to use uh, to distinguish microstructures by EBS image. I recommend you this method because this is very uh, powerful to distinguish. And in acicular ferrite, you can see this figure, and there are many irregular types, and high angle grain boundary is very small, but they are very large, and bainite ferrite has less inside of the grains. The important thing is the ductile to brittle transition temperature in here. Acicular ferrite is very low. It means the toughness is very high, and granular bainite is middle, and bainite ferrite is high. So the toughness of bainite ferrite is low, lowest. The, in that case, the, we can search, uh, watch that uh, tensile graph. Uh, in this case, granular bainite and acicular ferrite, of, uh, strength of each, each of them are similar. Uh, some researchers suggested that the granular bainite uh, strength of granular bainite is uh, stronger than acicular ferrite, but in, it is uh, determined by uh, grain size or many uh, secondary phases and many things. Uh, so it is not important to us. Uh, and, but important thing is bainite ferrite of strength is uh, very high, higher than acicular ferrite and granular bainite. So I suggest you guys, uh, I, first time I imagine that uh, I will make the, my microstructures mainly bainite ferrite because of high strengths and uh, minor microstructure will be uh, acicular ferrite because of low temperature toughness. So it is the right way to uh, develop the new uh, materials. Uh, this, there are some tables and you can watch easily. This is uh, fractographs of sharp impact specimens and minus. 196 degrees Celsius because uh, uh, we can only watch it, the brittle fractures in, in this temperature. So it is goes, uh, uh, when it, is, it has uh, high angle grain boundaries, it bent it easily, and, but it, it is not in this case. And bainite ferrite, uh, it is uh, composed of low angle grain boundaries, so it goes not, it goes directly. So in here, you can watch the uh, effective grain sizes uh, as I measured measured in the EBS image and uh, acicular ferrite is sm uh, smallest uh, than uh, smallest granular bainite and bainite ferrite. So I will uh, summarize uh, this of whole kind of things uh, very, very easy. The important thing is the strength and bainite ferrite is high and the toughness acicular ferrite is very high because of their small domain, uh, effective grain size and bainite ferrite is uh, strength is uh, because of their less type of their, and there are many second phases uh, between lesses. And so we have to remove granular bainite only composed of acicular ferrite and bainite ferrite.
So this is my real design of microstructure of high strength vanilla textures. Uh, this is chemical compositions and copper and boron are used because to make high strength. Uh, copper is a austenite stabilizer and we can make some low temperature transformation microstructures and boron is a, a very, very effective element to make a low temperature microstructure. And it, I will explain later. And uh, this is a two method to make uh, uh, some microstructures. This type is water catching. As I explained to you, how can I make bainite ferrite? And two step method is how can I make a sugar ferrite? So in this case, Q, quenching type is uh, uh, high strength, makes high strength. And A type, the air cooling type makes the high toughness. I will tell you the uh, this uh, elements. If, uh, uh, effect of copper addition. Copper is a tramp element. Tramp is uh, very like a trash, but uh, it is difficult to remove uh, in scrap of molten iron and steel. But uh, we, if we change our mind, the in recycling of scrap, we don't need to add again. So it, it can be economical and environmental element. When we, when we put the, um, like a 1.8% copper, it is okay as a zero point, and we don't need to add copper in this uh, steel. So it is the purpose of using tramp element. And the main thing is austenite stabilizer and makes uh, low temperature uh, microstructures and uh, hardening and uh, disadvantage is uh, some brittle fractures and surface cracks. So it can make the, uh, how many uh, the amount of the each elements can decide of this, uh, uh, this advantage and disadvantage. So we have to research that the amount, the proper amount of each element. And effect of boron. Boron is very, very funny uh, elements because uh, so many researchers uh, uh, studied this boron still very much. Uh, you can see this image, the boron is segregated in the between the grains, so it is easily segregated to the pryosinite grains. If it uh, literally, literally, the only the four ppm boron can make the whole of uh, the austenite grain boundaries. They, they are they can fill the austenite grain boundaries. Usually, ten ppm needs the, uh, to fill the whole of grain austenite grain boundaries. So the uh, advantage is the so it can stabilize the austenite grain boundaries. So the they can make they cannot uh, the high temperature microstructure cannot made because of boron, because the, the grain boundary is sta stable. So like uh, polygonal ferrite or acicular ferrite, that kind of things cannot make easily. So usually. Bainite ferrite and martensite can be formed easily in that we added boron. But it has this advantage because uh, it is segregated in the grain boundary, so it can make fractures, the in intergranular fractures, and uh, some it can make some brittle borides, the B boron nitrides, and so on. So can in, in this uh, CCT diagram, the boron can make this uh, uh, graph to, to uh, right hand side so we can make more uh, low temperature uh, microstructures. So these are microstructures as I experimented. Uh, there is things, uh, boron is added uh, 10 ppm and copper is 1.1 uh, uh, weight percent. Uh, there is a high alloying element as I made in four, four kinds of steels. So in that case, the, this is and the Q uh, method and so fast cooling condition. So volume fraction of bainite ferrite and bainite ferrite and martensite is very high, and you can distinguish this uh, in here OM image and SCM image and uh, OM repair etch image. And copper and boron addition and volume fraction of granular bainite is very high. And I will show you the low alloying low alloying steel. Then B1, A case, the B1 is uh, only the boron is added and copper is no added and the 
A condition is slow cooling than the Q condition. So that have I explained to you. In that case, uh, S plus A right is main, but the, uh, uh, we added boron, so the bainite ferrite is main too. So the slow cooling, the boron fraction of martensite is low and S plus ferrite is very high. Boron addition, so bainite ferrite is very high. So I uh, checked uh, all of volume fractions by using image analyzer, but you can see why the, this the 60 or 45, 45. This means uh, we can check the 59% uh, one, uh, point 0.1, but it is not important. Only the important thing is trend of microstructures because uh, I will use the, this microstructure indication. When we watch only these things in here, uh, it is n not e easy to understand how can we know the that the characters of microstructures. So um, I use this one, and the main uh, microstructures is goes in here, and uh, minor microstructures is in here. And plus means the volume fractions are similar. And so I use the uh, this microstructure indication. Uh, I make only four uh, microstructure groups in, in whole of uh, eight steels. So uh, in this case, the bainite ferrite bain, bainite start start temperature and martensite start temperature and between, uh, between them, so most of their uh, microstructure is uh, main microstructure is bainite ferrite and volume fraction of martensite. We can use this uh, this uh, equation easily. The martensite is uh, delta T is the degree of cooling below martensite start temperature. So in Q condition delta T is very high and A condition is delta T is low. So we can find it easily the, when we super cool the, down, down below the martensite start temperature and we can, how can, how many mar um, martensites we can get. And this is microstructure and tensile properties. And uh, because uh, this one is uh, very, you can see easily, this is very high enough to uh, access the uh, one gigapascal, and it is two. So you can watch this diagram, at uh, this table, and uh, it is it is uh, upper than the 1,000 megapascal and gigapascal, one gigapascal. So we call it giga steel or high strength steel, uh, high strength magnetic steels. But uh, this, this one is, uh, Mm, funny things because uh, you you already know the banana diagrams of in the steels, but they don't use the yield strength. They use the uh, ultimate tensile strength and elongation to make the banana diagram. But in that case, this is a high strength steel, and it uses uh, mainly the thick plate like API X eight X one hundred X one hundred and twelve. And important thing is the yield strength. You can get calculate easily if the API x eight the you can the multiply seven and minus ten, and you can uh, easily uh, assume the uh, yield strength. The, then in that case, about uh, x eight the yield strength may be a uh, five hundred fifty megapascal. So important thing is it is strength in the high strength steels because we have to sell the these steels to users. So I use the uh, thick plates, the high strength steels banana diagram in here, and there, there are some uh, microstructures uh, identified by four groups, and uh, you can watch it uh, if there is a the volume fraction of martensite is high, the strength is very high, but elongation is low. So best thing is this here a mixed thing about uh, each uh, microstructure is combined very uh, similar uh, volume fractions. These, these are sharp impact properties and this is upper shelf image and it would be uh, energy transition temperatures each one. And you can watch easily the left hand side the energy te transition temperature is very low, but right hand side you can watch the energy transition temperature is very high because it has some uh, chemical points. Uh, it, this te it has the weight percent of boron is too high, so they made some boron nitride, boride in the 
between the grains, so it can make the fracture. And in this case, copper makes some, some uh, second phases, a uh, brittle second phase too. So the, uh, you can watch easily when we uh, added excess, excess of the elements and it can lead the uh, temp uh, toughness of very lower. So I uh, checked the energy transfer temperature, each one. So you can watch that uh, in red, red one is Q condition and blue one is A condition. So air cooled condition, it has low uh, energy transfer temperature than the quenched conditions. So uh, I so I'd like to tell you the the different things between the in this uh, in this case and the, in this case. This one has uh, the low energy transfer temperature minus ninety eight degrees Celsius, but this one has high high energy transfer temperature than the C five case. So I checked uh, four kind of temperatures and I checked the uh, fractographs of each one. In the room temperature. The temple size is a little bit different, but uh, uh, we can easily know that uh, there are dim only temples that exist in here. And minus 20 degrees Celsius, and uh, in this case, the temple size is a little bit similar between, uh, distinguished from the room temperature, but uh, in this case, the temple size goes very higher, uh, larger than the, in this case, because the, the temperature, uh, the Absorbed energy is lower than the C5 case. And minus 60 degrees Celsius, uh, it can change. Uh, it is fully changed to brittle fracture mode. Uh, so we can only watch the cleavage. In this case, the dimple. But in this case, uh, we can watch the cleavage and the dimples and the mixed. So uh, generally, we can notice that 50% uh, of uh, Dimple and 50% of uh, cleavage, and we can check the there is uh, uh, microstructural ductile brittle transition temperature. But we use the energy transition temperature to to get the easy way. So this one is minus 900, uh, 98 degrees Celsius. So it goes uh, down. The, uh, we can uh, think that uh, it, it will be remained like this. Uh, important thing is minus. Nine, uh, 196 degrees Celsius. The, there are only the cleavage facets in here, but the size of cleavage facet is different in here. The, there are very large cleavage facets and there are small. And the uh, uh, cleavage facet size, uh, facet size I checked. So the, this one is smaller than the, this one. And uh, microstructure and toughness is uh, uh, I, as I told you, upper shelf energy is uh, determined by the uh, major microstructures. So it is uh, on almost all of them have uh, bainite ferrite is major microstructures. So it is not um, very different between each microstructures. Little, little bit same, but in that case, the energy transfer temperature it is depend depends on the. Uh, effective grain size. The effective grain size is uh, uh, determined by the volume fraction of acicular ferrite or granular bainite. So I checked the volume fraction of acicular ferrite. So it has these trends. When the, we have more acicular ferrite volume fractions, then the uh, energy transition temperature goes lower and the low temperature uh, toughness is very high. And another thing is effective grain size. And in this case, the effective grain size of this one is very small. In that case, the uh, uh, effective grain size is very larger than C5 case. So I checked the energy transfer temperature too. As I told you, the fractographs of the each Sharpie graph, Sharpie uh, test. So different thing is the volume fraction of granular bainite. Granu there are many granular bain. Uh, this one is bainite ferrite, but there are many granular bainites in here, but they usually composed of acicular ferrite in that C5 case. So energy transition temperature is uh, written by this uh, 
equation. Uh, it is F composition means the chemical composition and G strength is strength. So important thing is D. So effective grain size increases, energy transition temperature increases too. So it means uh, small effective grain size makes higher low temperature toughness and large grain size granular vainite increases and energy transition and then energy transition temperature increases too. So in that case, it, it has a uh, uh, contrast thing between uh, distinguished from the acicular ferrite. Uh, volume fraction of granular vainite goes higher when the, uh, that, at that case, the energy transition temperature goes higher too. Uh, I magnified the picture of the each cleavage fractures and you can watch it, uh, there are many uh, small cleavage faces in here, there are many uh, large cleavage faces in here. And in the case, there is uh, evidence for the, you can, I, I already show you the venting of cracks, but it is the evidence of venting of cracks because uh, cleavage facet size is very small, uh, then crack is vented ma many times because of the brittle fracture, uh, crack growth direction is 1 0 but in that case, it is not painted easily and quickly, and so the facet size of cleavage is very large. So it, this is evidence of that kind. Uh, this is these are my summaries. Uh, uh, I made the uh, main microstructures, bainite ferrite, and uh, I uh, make the another microstructures, acicular ferrite and granular bainite, and so on. And when we can get the uh, nice uh, low temperature toughness when we have the acicular ferrite, or a volume fraction of acicular ferrite is high, and uh, we have to remove the granular bainite because of their low toughness. So in that case, the, I already explained to you a uh, main microstructure it is bainite ferrite, so the uh, upper shelf energy is saturated in most cases. This is my summary. So I explained to you uh, when, I, when you want to design the microstructures, uh, when you want to the low temperature toughness, you have to make the domain design smaller so when you can make the two-step method of to make acicular ferrite. And you want to microstructure design in that case. Uh, I didn't explain to you in this seminar but uh, if I briefly tell you the, tell you the, if you want to go higher, you have to make more acicular ferrite or polygonal ferrite because high strength steels, the, the uh, upper shelf energy is lower than the low strength steels. So we, you have to uh, check the, each of their mechanical properties. So you have to get the goals of each mechanical properties. So this is my sketchbook. So I draw a picture without using the paint or brush or some other things. I only used the chemical elements and I used uh, rolling and cooling conditions. So I draw some very nice picture. So this one is I developed in my as I was a graduate school student. So I got the PhD. Deg degree in the post text to drawing this picture. And uh, so I'd like to explain to you, you have to think about uh, that. Uh, only important thing is your own idea. So you have to uh, think many things about to make some new advanced materials. So, and make your own design to be a good scientist. Thank you for listening. And I am very appreciated to have a chance to speak to you. Thank you.